Well, hi, everybody. This is Heather Lockett with Lasting Conversations, and I'm so delighted to bring forward a beautiful human soul, Morgan Rich, who is Zooming in from Oregon. So, hey, Morgan, how are you today? I am, I am well. It's really, really nice to be here and, and great, grateful to be here and just grateful for the day, of course. Beautiful. And I'm so grateful that we have met. We were connected by your good friend, Josh Mora. And Josh and Dennis have their own show called The Back Nine, and I was a guest on their show. And then somehow serendipitously, you happened to hear me and said, we need to connect. And I just love that. And I so appreciate that. And Josh and Dennis are amazing. And you've known Josh literally forever. And yeah, you know, I'll get into the really quick introduction, which you're an author, a coach, an adventurer. You're officially on van life. You, You work with men and families and you are a beyonder. So we will get into all of that and more. And let's start Let's start with Josh and that sense of community, because, you know, last in conversations, it is about community and having people have that soft place to land where it's very chaotic right now. And if there are people and resources to know that there are core values, there's a core that can help all of us remember our own core. So if you have a buddy that you've known since (laughs) you are toddling around, let's just start right there. Yeah, it's beautiful. Josh and I, we've known each other since we were three years old. I mean, that is, it's kind of amazing thinking back on that. And we spent years and years and years together. We have spent about 11 years together when we were young, going to school, playing hockey, going to summer camp. Um, there's some funny stories of our, I went on uh, family trips with him. They invited me along. So I was his buddy to go along. And we went spelunking. Like I remember going to Mark Twain Caves down in in Missouri, and I am I am I am claustrophobic, and so I remember um, going along and, and like crawling through caves and and just dealing with that like you know that 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 beautiful place. Um, and we went multiple times. So so for you know I, I was able to be with with them, which was just so beautiful and just felt so welcomed. And that is so, so awesome. The very word spelunking, I don't know the etymology, but it's a funny word. And so here are these little boys out doing their thing, literally spelunking along, which I love. Yep. Cave cave exploring. Exactly. It it is a really fun word. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And so then Josh and I, 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 my dream at that point in my life was to play, was to play professional hockey and baseball. I'm a big athlete. Josh and I played a lot and it's, it's so many fun stories of, of, of him having this. Um, I was going to boarding school and he said, you should go to Cranbrook. And so I ended up actually going to Cranbrook in Michigan, playing hockey, winning state championships and, um, and sort of meandering off. And Josh and I lost touch for, for quite a while there you know, through the high school years, college years and beyond. And then, um, just recently reconnected with, uh, I, we were just started to cross paths, saw that he was meditating and doing some work. I'm meditating and, and in my own, you know, masculine work and was like, wow, we have, we have, uh, we have, you know, come a long way. And so we connected, listened to the podcast and Heather, I was just really drawn to the interview. You know, I was really, um, touched by your sharing, by the, um, by your journey um, you know, your courage of being, of being in, in your life as a, as a thoughtful woman, um, you know, in the second half of life or second part of life or whatever we want to call it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. And it just felt like, wow, there's some good territory that we can get into together around intimacy, around dating, around, um, the masculine, the feminine. And so it's really nice to be here. Thank you. And thanks for all of that, including all the spelunking and, you know, in a funny way, it feels like, so those of us in our next chapters, um, we are spelunking. We are spelunking along, which is to explore, to go through our own caves and caverns of ourselves and our inner work. Um, and then what is out there? What is beyond? Yeah. So tell us about yeah. the beyonder part, because that's very exciting. Yeah, well, I, 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 yeah, I'm excited to tell about that. And I really do like the idea of the spelunking and the caving. You know, because right. there, there's something about being underground and under yep. the earth and under the surface. Right. And that is really important and rich territory, of course, in all of our journey of it's easy to it's easy to have appearances be out, you know, how we look outside. But it's really right. that deep, that deep work, that deep inside stuff that is under the surface, that is underground, that is in the dark. 
that is that is so important and so beautiful. And so um, it's funny thinking about that as as even now I'm 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 gonna, um, wanting to take some men out and there's some caves up here and to get underground and literally like literally get underground and under the surface and do some work down in there um, of of connecting in there. So and that's part of beyonding is part of getting beyond the surface level and beyond the surface level um, beyond the status quo. And, and being a beyonder means, um, for me, it means about connecting, connecting to the, the man I know myself to be, connecting to that moral center, connecting to the way that I want to be in the world and not being caught in the status quo, not being caught in consensus reality, not being caught in who I'm supposed to be or how I'm supposed to be, but actually stepping into how I know um how I know I want the world to be and, and then bringing that forth. So the beyond what I say is a place where it's like, where we, where we, where there's like um, so many different ways to say it. And I love it. And we can keep like, you know, diving in there. It's a place where it's like this safe, beautiful sanctuary where the fugitives, right? Those of us who know there's a different way of doing things, who know there's a different way of being, can go and feel safe and feel connected and feel like here we are together being the beautiful beings that we be and then bringing that out to the world. Tell me about the fugitives because that's a very interesting word. I can connote what you're talking about and maybe I'll put it out there to say that the fugitive that we feel is in ourself, that we, we're maybe not fitting in or there's pieces that we think are missing. And so that's part of that whole, that deep dive to remember our yeah. own wholeness. But, but tell me about that word fugitive that came up as a matter of fact. Yeah, thanks. It's um, um, Bio Akamalafe is a beautiful man who has a program called we will dance with mountains and he, and he puts a lot of really beautiful energy into the world. And so it comes really from him where he talks about fugitives and he talks about sanctuary. Um, and one of, one of my favorite things that he says is times are urgent. Times are urgent. Let us slow down. Mm -hmm. Let us slow down. Which also brings me back to a, like a quote that I've heard of the Dalai Lama of, of you know, he, he was talking to a friend or a colleague one day and he said, this is a really, really busy day. Like, this is a really, really busy day. So, and I got a lot going on. So instead of meditating for an hour, I'm going to meditate for two. Right. That, it, that it's this idea of starting to slow ourselves down. And it's not about slowing down and like going to more yoga classes, which is great. Like that, that yes, let's do all of that. The slowing down in the fugitive part is about is about um, really inhabiting and seeing the world from a different perspective, right? That there that there is a way the world is sort of going that I think many of us can say is like this doesn't feel actually like the way we want it to be going. Mm -hmm. Like we're trending in a direction. One of the things I talk about in the book is the trance of the normal world that we that we've gotten lost and we've gotten off track, kind of like in the, in a trance kind of way. To say that, to say that, like our sense making has gone offline for many. So the fugitive idea is to say there's some of us who are, who are like saying, like, wait a second, like, wait a second. There is this other way. There is this invitation beyond. There is this place called the beyond. And let's go and let's 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 see what it's like to be there. Let's actually stand outside of normal. And, and bring our love and our care and our connection to people in the community that you were talking about and bring that alive in the world. Um, and so there's, there's some rebelliousness in there and there's some mm -hmm. pokiness in there. And there's some, you know, the fugitives are those like who have been rejected and who have been, who have been outcast. And I think in the book, when I talk about is like, I talk about one is, is those of us who are, let's say energy workers, mm -hmm. you know, who are connected to, who are healers who can hear the song of the cosmos, who can communicate with trees, who have those special sensibilities that I think more than, more of us have those than I think is one of the beautiful adventures I've been on since, since I've started this project is I keep seeing and learning about all these incredible people from places I would never expect, like a hockey locker room where guys start talking about their connection to the energy. 
And so the fugitives are those who have that and know that and are ready to bring it forth. Yeah. I love that. Uh, everything is just so beautiful. Now, of course, the connotation of fugitive is maybe somebody's done something wrong. They're running away from something, running away from jail or something. But it feels more like we are almost a, well, you could even say refugee, but we are, mm-hmm. um, it's in this remembrance of ourselves, really. And that piece of rebel, because yes, it is perhaps against status quo. And those are those irritation points of saying this, something else has got to give, help me remember what feels more natural. So we are our natural selves are not really meant to be part of so much chaos. So I love that you mentioned that things might be very busy and picked up moving quickly. Time feels like it's moving quickly. And that is our invitation to take a broader pause and really slow our roll and then maybe decisions will come from a different space. Are you finding that with your clients and the people you work with? Yeah, it's really beautiful. I mean, the times are urgent. Let us slow down idea. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday and she just began, she just began meditating and she was sort of saying like, God, there's a, you know, she was trying to make sense of it. Like, what is it that I'm getting, what is it that I'm getting out of this? And she said, what I notice is that in, 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 it's like inhabiting the now. It's like bringing myself present in a way that is so profound in that what I realize in that place is that I can, I can be in this moment. Like I'm learning that no matter how chaotic and crazy and loud and wacky things are, you know, when we go into the cave, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable. I mean, I was, I'm claustrophobic. So it's like literally physically uncomfortable where the, you know, the space is getting smaller and there's all kinds of dynamic there, but metaphorically that, that is true. when we, when we dance with our shadow, right. right? That it, that it's, that it's, that it's difficult. It's seeing things that are inconvenient. It's starting to presence things where it's like, Oh God, like I, this is not, this is uncomfortable. And I think for men, right. It's, it, that's, that's challenging territory where we're supposed to be strong and stoic and, you know, you know, tough and don't be, you know, don't be weak. And it's like, well, actually I, I find, I turn it and say like, actually the vulnerability is strength. Right. But the presence piece of that, to be able to be in the meditation, like my, like my friend said, to be really present with that you know, and slow it down to say, okay, I can do this breath. I can do this breath. I can do this moment. And no matter how hard it is, if I just keep breathing and keep bringing myself present, it opens up possibilities, right? It opens us up to the emergent moment, which is a beautiful piece of van life, which we can get into, but it's like, it's like standing in, in the present moment at the edge of the mystery and seeing what emerges. And to me, that's a really exciting, vulnerable, powerful place to to live. Yeah. I'm smiling so broadly right now because um, when we we had a beautiful chat the other day and you had mentioned about standing at the edge of the mystery. So I want you to talk more about that. My smile was that, um, you know, life and a whole different meditative day um, where I had planned one thing, but nope, here's a, a deeper invitation, which said led to going out to the beach. And I thought I was going to go one place, but then the, the storm clouds were, were building. So the photographer and me was having a field day because, and, but the energetics of what you're talking about, I was literally standing at the edge of that mystery and you could feel it where, where I was standing literally to the right of me was bright and sunny and then litter and then overhead was kind of cloudy mm. and then Ugh. within the quarter mile was this dark and stormy and it was very intense but it was mm. beautiful mm. absolutely beautiful so there was this visceral physical in nature feeling of being at the edge of the mystery and was i going to like yeah. be afraid of the lightning no i was grounded and centered within that space and nature was all around me doing its thing. So talk to us more about this standing at the edge of mystery, because I think this is where, and therapists will say this, or 
teachers or kids, but people will get to that space where it's very uncomfortable and you're at the edge of something really yeah. big and they'll turn yeah. and run yeah. or eat yeah. or drink or whatever it is that we yeah. do. We humans right. love Numb. to yep. fill our spaces. Yeah. Um, so talk to us more about that mysterious space because <laughs> it feels that from there becomes everything. Yeah. 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 Boy, there are so many different directions we could go with this and we can go all the different directions. Either. It's so, <laughs> it's so, it's so fun. One Maybe of the, I love I, that centered space. We can start within that centered space. Cause I think that's what you were talking about is coming to that, into that darkness, what feels like darkness or fear, or whatever is uncomfortable, but that's the, that's the centered space Yeah. to then feel re- you know, in more in yeah. harmony. Right. Yeah. 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 One of the wild things that happened just this week is uh, I was designing the cover of the book. And I had, I've been spending the last, let's say, six weeks designing the cover of the book and designing the cover of the book. And I sent it out to my, to my, to my team, my group, my friends, and said, What do you think? And a dear friend of mine who designed my website, wrote back and said, that's not the cover. Here's the cover. And she just mocked it up. And I saw it. I was sitting at dinner with my mom and I just started laughing because I was like, oh my God, here we are right at the finish line, right in this present moment. And just like you, just like you were there and where you're like, here's the way I thought this was going to go. Like my day was going to go this way. And then all of a sudden it turns and you're at the beach in the storm, in the present moment, in the emergent moment, in the potential of that and how beautiful that is. And then just amazing things often, not always, um, happen. And in this case, the book cover now changed. I send it out, the new cover out and people love it and are so inspired by it. So there, like, like there's one of those moments where it's like, you never, you know, you just never know what can possibly emerge. I love that. And I love that, see this, you mentioned it, our team. So yeah. ultimately all of our work, everything is between me and me, you and you, this is a yeah. self individualized journey. However, our team members that can offer that switch of perspective. And I've just had mm-hmm. it myself. Are you sure you're going to sign that lease? Are you sure you really right. want to do that? I will love you and support you, but really look harder. So this is, that's the beauty of community team, you know, that moment of going within and also those who can have our back as well. Yeah. Yeah. So coming back to your last thing along, along with that is this place of, you know, what is it to be really with yourself and what is it to be able to stand at that edge of the mystery and, and allow that emergence and for me, what I talk about in the book, you know, the, the, the way that I've done it is I talk a lot about discomfort, doing discomfort training. I call it training for the unknown, right? And I write unknown inside of unknown is now. And so capitalize now. So it's the unknown and it's like right now. Right. And so training for the unknown, the huge part of that is discomfort training which includes, so it includes putting yourself into those uncomfortable moments, like training to be ready for that moment that you just talked about where you're like, you're at the edge, right? And, and you're like, okay, something's about to go. Something's about to go. This is super uncomfortable. It starts to get shaky. And it's like, how do we stay calm? So that's another piece of the training is to put myself under pressure and then learn to really calm down my nervous system. So one way I do this is like in cold water. So cold shower, cold plunge, it seems like a very easy way to, to, en- to enter. So stand in a cold shower and, you know, what more usually people do when they get into this cold shower is you go like, you know, there's, there's like this tense, like, ah, like reaction, which is fine. It makes sense. Right. It's, it's a shock to the system. Um, and what I did in, in my training was I, I, when I would get it, I live in the Pacific Northwest there's all these beautiful waterfalls that I love playing in, laying in, goofing around in, just being, it's just like, I have a relationship with water that's so beautiful. But I'm like, if I'm going to play in the waterfalls, like I got to get good at being in cold water. So I started playing in cold water 
And, and what I noticed was the first times I would get in, I would have that like, ah, like, Oh my God. And I would like freak out and I would jump out of the water and I'd be like, okay, good. I'm, and I was like, wait a second, that, that doesn't make, you know, that doesn't make sense. So I, 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 something in me said, calm down. Right. And so the next time I got in, I just said, have one moment of calm where your system is like, here I am in an intense situation. There's a lot of stimulus. There's a lot of sensation. There's a lot of what I could call discomfort or pain. And I'm okay. Like I'm okay with all of this going on. And what started to happen, Heather, was it was beautiful that that one moment of calm started to expand, right? It started to lengthen and just expand where I was like, now I was able to be in the water and be with the sensation. And it stopped eventually becoming like problematic and actually became really beautiful where I'm like, okay, here I am. And I'll just say that it's transferred to intimate situations, physical touching situations that are both either sexual or not sexual, where it's like the beauty of the present moment of touch, of connection, of a conversation, of that, of that place, it tra- has translated for me into those places of this is amazing. So that's, that's so-, so that to me is the ground of how you start to learn to hang in that, in that, in that place. Well, this is also beautiful. And of course we are, you know, safe, unsafe, safe, unsafe. And so what you're describing that can get into every corpuscle of our bodies and our psyches, et cetera, is this feeling of, you know, that dysregulation essentially is, I don't feel safe right now. So if that is the, the invitation, the cosmic global invitation right now is to be in that now and to know you're okay. You, you are okay, even in the midst, and especially if someone's going through chemo or going through whatever, and then within a divorce, whatever all those things are, um, it's okay. And yeah, you can have, you don't have to become a superhuman to say, well, I don't feel anything, because let's get into that too. We have to tap into our feelings so that we're not numbing, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll get back into your work with men, especially. And then yeah. Yeah. Women, you know, it, we're all in this together, male, yeah. female, and the male parts of ourselves, et cetera, et cetera. But it goes into this core safe, unsafe. And this gets into what you're just talking about. If we can reframe, yeah. you're okay. Yeah. Right now, you're yeah. just fine and dandy. Yeah. The yeah. way I call it, the same way I say it is, I've got me. Like, I've got, ah. I've got me. So part of, right. So I've got me and then. I can do hard things. And one of the key pieces of that is, is so, so the discomfort, so there's discomfort and calm that go together. Yeah. And then another part um, that I talk about is, is, is nourishing self-talk. So I, I just think how, how I tell my story about what's going on with me makes all the difference in the world. Yep. And, and if I can be nourishing and generative and kind to myself and frame and learn to frame everything that's going on in a way of that is, that is generous and nourishing to myself, that is such, such, such powerful territory. Because a lot of the stories we tell ourselves is that, is that we aren't enough and that things are broken. So when you're going through a divorce or chemo or a difficult moment in life, it's possible to, to, to tell the story of like, Oh my God, like everything is just horrible. And this is the worst thing. And I'm a bad person. And I did this wrong. And I did that wrong. My body's broken. And of course everybody else has to suck. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And like, right. And so it's just like, it's just like, can just be this negative downward spiral. Right. Or you can say like, wow, this is really hard. There's a lot going on right now. And here I am imperfectly being present with all of this. Right. You know, my body hurts, but I can actually learn to be present with it. I'm so curious why it is that my body is giving me this message of, you know, cancer of some sort of thing to say like, oh, there's something that needs to get fixed or there's something that's alive or here I am, you know, facing death. 
and like I'm actually doing it kind of well and I wish I were doing it better, but I'm, but like, here I am, you know, or here's this divorce. Like, wow, this is really uncomfortable. This is really hard, you know? And, um, and I, I get it that in order for things to clear and clean, like death is a part of life and life is a part of death. And this is a certain kind of death that's happening to this relationship for whatever reason. And here I am going to do the best I can with it. Right. And so like learning how to speak and how to sh- bring the story in a way that is giving myself credit and it can be credit for like, wow, I'm really like, you know, this is really good. You know, this is really important. It's going to open all kinds of doors or this is really hard. And here I am sort of muddling through it, but at least I have the courage and the ability. And I'm like learning how to be a better human in this process. That's really painful. And at least I'm not, you know, sitting on the couch eating flaming hot Cheetos. Um, I'm actually in, in, in the moment. So, um, so that feels really, that feels really significant. And like being, and again, as you said, again, like being able to hang in those moments, like hang in the uncomfortable discomfort is really huge. It really is huge because this too shall pass. That's the thing. It's not there forever. And I think a lot of people have been in pain of all sorts for so long. They don't know that there is another way that pain, pain can dissipate in all metaphoric and actualities pain can, but you have to choose to let it go. And yeah. that steps back into the stepping out of our status quo, which if status quo is nothing but pain, look over here for a little bit, right? Yeah. Look into I, your heart. Yeah. Totally. And yeah, this, the, and, and I'll just say like, it's been really interesting. Um, for me this week, this, these last couple of weeks have been, have been really up and down. The mm-hmm. book is coming and I've had many moments of like, oh my God, dude, who do you think you are? You know, and like healthy masculinity. And I'm looking at some of the things I'm doing in my life. I'm like, oh my God, like, wow. And so it's that, I mean, I've talked to other authors and they're just like, this is exactly what happens. It happened to Brene Brown, right? Where she like put, you know, it's like, it, 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 you know, you like put this out into the world and then it's exposing. Right. It's very and vulnerable. So I've been, yeah very vulnerable and i've been really in that vulnerability and and like there's moments where i get caught in it and there's moments where like hey my friend like this is what your book is about <laughs> like be in the discomfort <laughs> of it like breathe into it like this is like you know it's like not surprising that this is what's up because this is exactly like what's right. going on right and um yeah. And what I've noticed is that, so, so, so the thing I've been sitting with is, um, is the meditation piece that I was talking about, the discomfort piece that we were talking about. And then, then in the place of like the edge of the mystery is sitting there and trying to like find that edge inside of me that knows I'm a good person that knows that can feel the confidence and the belief and the, and, and can kind of get back, like back to myself in a certain way. Right. And what I found is that reaching out to friends, Josh, others, and I've built this beautiful network of, of friends, of, of men, of adult. I had to work really hard to find adult men who I could connect with, who were authentic, who would hold me, um, who I could really create meaningful friendship and connection with in a way that I hadn't when I was younger. And I couldn't find, I was like, what's like, I was so baffled by it. Um, but what I find in this place, just like you, just like you said, Heather, is that, is that place of how do you find, how do you get back to that edge? How do you, you know, this too shall pass. And what I'm finding is that, um, by connecting with the people who I really trust and who really know me, that they help me remember myself. They help me re- see that, find that different perspective. Um, and I've really worked hard to, to have people, friends, I have music, I have poems, I have readings, I have um, um, notes people have written me. Like I have ways of going back in the tough moments and and helping myself remember like here, like, yes, like, yes, this will pass. There will be a time when this challenging thing and you'll come back to that beauty, that place. Um, and I have a lot of practices that I use to, to, to find my way back home. Right. 
the, the treasure box or the toolbox to go, okay, let me, let me use this. And exactly the reorient yeah. and reset. And of course the, your new book is going to, is called the invitation beyond. So going back to what you were saying about our team and uh, that moment, as you were describing, you're birthing a book. And of course, as women and families, when you're birthing a whole new human, your child, you're at that, you're literally at that precipice. Life mm. is literally about to change. Yeah. And so, you know, at this top of this roller coaster, mm-hmm. yeah. it's completely unknown. And it's, I just remember, especially with my first born, my son mm-hmm. who came in a whole different way. There was no plan. I had all the books, but ultimately nature knows what it's doing. <laughs> and I was in mm-hmm. a safe space, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I had that feeling of, cause you have to let go. So it's that, it's that um, serendipitous, but it's that simultaneous moment of utter surrender and what the heck? And, oh, it's happening anyway. So, but this whole questioning of, so you're birthing this book, you know what you're doing. There's no accident what you just wrote about to be the mirror and messenger back, right? Mm -hmm. Do I really Mm -hmm. know what I'm doing? Have Mm -hmm. I just messed this up? Are people Mm going to see me? Am I going to be that vulnerable? Mm -hmm. Is it going to succeed? Like all these other crazy tapes. Oh, well, therein lies, it's no, it's no longer mystery. So the, the Yahtzee cup is there it's full of the dice we know what dice are in there and so sometimes we're changing up the dice mm-hmm, we're changing up mm-hmm, we're changing mm-hmm. it all up and and that i think mm-hmm. in this now moment we're being offered whole new puzzle pieces like whole new gifts like becoming a parent is something yeah. we think we know what we're going to happen but we don't because then our kids are a whole nother ball game right and I know I might sound tangential, but it's true. It goes to the same thing because it is very exponential and mm. simultaneous. I That's, love it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Like as you're talking about it, I'm just, I was like sort of sitting and marinating in the, in the thought of the, of, of birthing. And I hadn't, I, like I've talked about it conceptually, but then when you were just saying it, it was like, oh my God, right. There's this birth happening and and in so many ways i'll just say that that that, that i didn't write the book the book wrote me like it was it was it was was energy coming through the cosmos it's like yeah um and i was just a conduit for just like just like in so many ways as parents we are conduits women you know in this very physical way of this of this new energy coming into the world and and it's like okay right and it's it's this it is so emergent and it is such a mystery of, of what's coming and um and the imp- and, and like and the impacts of it um so it is it's to me it's that same it's that same beautiful practice you know of of um i think that i get into trouble and i might say we get into trouble but i get into trouble when i start to create expectations or or thinking about here's what it's going to do or how it's going to change or what's going to happen right um, because then, because then when it doesn't, there, there's all this fertile ground for, um, disappointment and for all kinds of things. Yep. And what I found is that, um, the things, you know, like standing at the edge of the mystery, the kinds of things that I put out that I imagine will happen, <laughs> um, it seldom happens in the way I imagine it. And it often happens in way more interesting sort of extravagant, challenging, beautiful, incredible ways that I could not have possibly imagined. I think like our kids, you know, like they come out and then they're this just, and we just get to dance with it. Um, yep. You can try You can try to resist it and, and want it to be different, but it's going right. to be exactly what it's going to be. And, and, and that to me is the beautiful dance of both parenting and of life and of, of all, all the, you know, relationship and all this, all these things, all of these things. So it, there's that simultaneous thing that there's a certain knowing, and then there's the surrender in expectation 
because the, the spaces that we don't know. So vision boards are great to maybe begin to tap into or draw an outline of a book or whatever it is, and then let the magic happen mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. then like, let it go. And right. Whether it's a book or kids or whatever, we think we have their paths carved. We don't. It, and I do your recall. I'm recalling a moment with my, my daughter, with my second mm-hmm. and rocking right. her. And by then That's I just, nice. I just said, I can't wait to know who you are. Like the, mm-hmm. I knew she was about to show me something completely different. And of course she did yeah. completely different. And it's just beautiful because we can't plan this stuff. We think we can. Um, and maybe let's circle back into the work with men. And and I love yeah. that you're doing this. And Ben Curtis was a friend of the show also in his wheelhouses with men as well. And of course, so many of the other gentlemen that are part of the show. And, you know, we know guys can get a bad rap and they've been dealt all kinds of decks of cards that they didn't want. And especially as sensitive and people that want to feel their feelings and express who they are in their wholeness, in their totality. And we had, I wrote this down when you and I talked the other day about our unique expression of wholeness and where I mentioned a couple of shows ago about seeing there is a next generation of these guys that understand this. They don't have to be only a famous athlete and then everything's by the wayside. They Mm -hmm. are both family men, dads, men, people of God, whatever it is in their totality. And by the way, they play amazing basketball or amazing sports or amazing (laughs) things. So this is, this is part of next generation as well. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, um, the, the, um, I love it. Like I thank you and bring us back to the masculinity piece because it, it feels really significant. And and yeah. and the the book has taken on has is so many different iterations of things. That, and and um, the invitation beyond um, started maybe if I remember back as an invitation for sensitive men, um, knowing that it's so important for the for us sensitive men. To, to be able to step forward and to bring a different kind of masculine presence to be able to be ourselves in the world. And as it's evolved, one of the really interesting things that's happened is, is, um, you know, all these different downloads, but this idea of masculinity as a, um, what I want for the women in my life, I want, I want to offer them, I want to, I want to help them enter the arena if you will, where they were, where you, they can blossom, where they can bring the beautiful essence of their being alive. Mm -hmm. And I've had that stunning privilege with so many different friends and clients of mine to, to hold a space as a man for the emergence of that, of, of women, of the, of your essence, of that place where um, I could just feel, I could feel, um, um, just the, the beautiful space that gets held and that is, that is outside of the dismissal, the gaslighting, the, the, um, rejection, the disbelief, like all of that that has happened, I think for women for so, so long, mm-hmm. be able to hold a space where, where someone feels safe enough to really bring their heart to really say, here's the gifts I have. Here's my unique expression in the world. And I have this sort of special ability to like, I relate to people as their biggest version. And so in that place, not only are they starting to bring their essence, but I'm like, and what about this part? And what about this part? And I can feel and see this, like their goddess, the, the, you know, the, 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 just the beautiful, like expansion of them coming online. And, and then the idea of them entering the arena as, as, as that place with me, with us as the men holding the space, protecting, you know, uplifting and, and allowing that. And the, and the insight that came Heather that was really powerful for me was I'm able to hold that protection piece and I know where the attacks come from because I've had to walk the same journey. Mm-hmm. That that same way that, that, that 
there's been um, gaslighting, dismissal, rejection um, of 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 that of the es- you know of that essence. It happens for the sensitive guys too, right? Right. That I've been attacked and gaslighted and told I'm supposed to be different or tougher or not weak or this that and the other thing, and it was like, oh. Uh, uh, and it was a dismissal of self. And so I had to get strong enough to say, wait a second, you know, like here I am, I've got me this, like my sensitivity, my vulnerability, my ability to feel and bring forth is actually a gift. It's actually the strength that we want and need in men to be able to be in those places. And so it was this beautiful, um, realization of how powerful and beautiful that that place is both for you know women and for men or the masculine or feminine or however we want to you know however we want to say that um yeah and so i just feel deeply honored to do that and bring this forth and to just play in this space really you know is 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 to is to um is to learn and keep learning about how to how to be together and create all this meaning that is so rich and, and, and amazing and beautiful. And I want to tap right back to the fun part in just a second. Yeah. But everything that you were just sharing, this gets into, again, perhaps just generational at this point, but it's a reframing of even what we think masculine is supposed to look like, what we yeah. think being a male or a female is supposed to look like. And again, even in the visual of what you were feeling, when somebody is all up, in, in workplaces, especially, it plays out um, the notion of the yelling and the screaming and the belittling and gaslighting and the comp. It's not friendly competition. It's I'm going to tear you to shreds. Mm-hmm. And all of those come from. And if our parents have come from that, especially if that's what you're mm-hmm. used to, those are nothing but fear factors. Yeah. And there was something that you did even visual. You can't speak. You feel choked up emotionally, vocally, verbally. And, and of course, then it plays out in our marriages and everything else in our governments, et cetera, et cetera. So this is, this is this new wave. This is that new opportunity where in some ways we're beyond that mystery. We already know. And the generations younger than us, they know already and they're not putting up with it. So they know that two people male, female, 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 you know, male, male, whatever your family unit is, you're bringing your wholeness of self as partnerships to individual people yeah. to then become the wholeness of, of what needs to happen without any of that crazy town that we've been mm-hmm. so used to. So it's even, it's that allowance, you use that word to allow, we have to yeah. allow the change. We have to allow a different mindset Mm-hmm. You know, can, can men cry? Why not? Right. Can, Absolutely. can they load the dishwasher any way they feel like it? They don't even have to, they can do whatever they want. Mm-hmm. It, it just all, we have to allow for each other to be our own selves. And, yeah, and this is, this is what you're talking about. I know it. It's beautiful. I mean, yeah, it's, it, it, yeah. And, and, and for me, um, you know, when we're our unique self, like when, you know, if, if you are in your complete stunning essence and bringing your full self and I'm in mine and bringing my full self, and then there's four others of us, Josh and all the others are bringing, you know, and like we're in, we're actually supporting each other to be full and whole and bring whatever the unique, beautiful gifts each of us has forward then we're all, we're all together in a better spot. Like it, right. it uplifts, it uplifts us all right. when we're name when we're name calling and belittling yeah. and, and intimidating and like, you know, making people feel bad about themselves. It does. It gets to be that like, yep. Oh God. And, 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 and then like in a relationship, in a business, on a team with your, yep. as a parent, as a son, as a kid, as a child, you know, it's like, this it this isn't getting us where we want to go right right i mean it's just so it seems so massively obvious of of like and and to me what's been amazing about this whole project is i keep interacting with people and i can feel the wholeness like i can and i and i and again i have this sort of you know sense of like i can see people's fullness and it's like oh my 
God, like this is unbelievable how much untapped potential there is. Right. You know, people who are, who have this ability to do energy healing, but who have kind of been like, yeah, I do energy healing. You know? <laughs> like, I have this little thing that I do where I like, you know, talk to the trees or, you know, whatever, you know, and it's like this like little voice and it's this, you know, and, and for me, there's, um, bringing not one of the, another thing that came in the book, which was just so beautiful is, is it's like, it's not just about tolerating that uniqueness. Like that's beautiful. Like tolerating is, 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 is more than what we've been doing. Right. right? Instead of the belittling and gaslighting and, and like, and, and depressing, depressing the, the gifts and the love and, and, and what, and what we know in our heart we get to a place where we, we tolerate it and accept it. That's awesome. But then when we start to expand and synergize and come into sanctuary, right? The fugitives come together in sanctuary and we start to work together and enhance our abilities. To me, that's the through line of all the craziness that's happening in the world today. Right. Right. Like when we've come back to love and connection and being and bringing the beautiful care and love and remembering, right? It's not about creating. It's remembering what we know to be the case is that we want to be in love with each other. Right. There And there it is. You know, we want to be in love with each other. We That's just it. Period. Yeah. It yeah. is that simple. Love is simple. It just, it's that simple. And then all the rest is literally unnatural, right? And... You know, we, we all have to do what we have to do. And we have our journeys, but it, that's what it comes down to. So I mentioned about the fun part. So this gets into the fun part where we can sing and dance or play a game or get, talk to us about the fun part, because even within, <laughs> um, it doesn't even have to be something like that because the fun is in its essence. It's also right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. To me, to me, I mean, what, what's, what started to happen for me as I've been on this journey is that is, is, uh, and, and just with the, with the current, you know, climate that we exist in, in the United States, at least there's so much draw to polarity. I'm on this team. You're on that team. I'm on team. Good. You're on team bad. This is that the other thing. Right. And, and whatever that me, means. <laughs> yeah. Whose team right. is good or bad, right? That's the perception. Sorry, just saying. It, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a yeah. right, exactly. It's a perception. Right. We all, you know, and it's like, and 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 it's a, and it's an identity, and it's an identity right. piece. We could go down that road if we want to, but it's it's like when I've got me and you've got you, then we can be in a different, we can be in a different place. And so what started to happen is like the good, bad, right, wrong has started to dissipate in my it's like, no, I'm just having an experience. Right. And and then the experience is playing hockey and, 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 or, 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 you know, or, um, being in a relationship or a friendship or whatever it is. And, and, and these moments come up where there's, where there's tension, you know, like we talked about before, where the discomfort starts to show up. And for me, like that, um, fun, I I just, I was spending time with a friend of mine in, in she's from Amsterdam. Um, and she was like, Fun is an interesting word. Like she just like, what does it mean? Like she's like, you use it a lot. And so I started to play around with it. I was like, oh, interesting. What what I actually want to say is like it's mean, like there's a lot of meaningfulness. And I started to just like sort of pull it apart and say, like, for me, part of the like essence, the joy, the like meaning of life is getting into these interesting, uncomfortable places. Because like, that's where the juiciness is. Like if you really want intimacy with a partner, you gotta to go to the uncomfortable places. And what I find is that those are like the places where there's tension and like, and, and grittiness. Um, and when, and, and when I get into it with someone, like that's where the connection happens. Like that's where the, that's where it gets, you know, and, and it can be physical and sexual and all that. But, but there's some like incredible intimacy in the conversation and the connection in the, like when you're able to hang in that discomfort, incredible, like the, it's, it's delicious. Like it's so fun and delicious and meaningful and juicy and like, 
connecting. And so for me that, you know, and again, that can be, that can be in an intimate partnership that can be with, 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 you know, as a parent, with friends, playing sports, working out, like to me, it all is, it's all in there of here's this like richness, this, this intense moment that I get to play and dance with. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, and that is the fun part. I think, I think every day there's something fun and meaning it's that feeling, you know, how does this make you feel? Mm -hmm. And if we're feeling a certain way and name, name any of it. And obviously we like, we enjoy these expansive, okay, well, this feels relaxing. Sometimes it is in that tension. Okay. Maybe I, some, maybe I didn't even know I needed to yell out and scream or, or Mm -hmm. punch a pillow, whatever it is, whatever the expression is. Well, these are those moments because we get to be here on planet earth having these experiences and in all of its flavors. And that, that is fun. It is. And it's like, yeah, like the deliciousness of having a human body, like my friend, my dear friend, Brent, just, I'm so grateful for the men in my life. It, it, it is so good to have, like, we just hold each other to the highest standard and just say whatever needs to be said, like honest, hard, beautiful, hugging, a lot of physical, like just, it's really special. And he just often is like, love, I love this physical body. Like I love being in this body in this, like I get to feel and play and taste and touch and dance and move and like, and it's just this incredible, like what a gift to be in a physical body. And, and, and I come back to this, like how we tell our story, right? Right. The whole thing about telling the story. It's like in each day, there are, we have so many different experiences, right? right? Whether you're at work or at play or whatever, there are so many different opportunities to experience life. Absolutely. And if you can tell the story of like, look how delicious this is. Look how interesting this is. Look how uncomfortable this is. Like I really messed that right. up. Like, wow. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you know, and just laugh at yourself or just be like, okay, that's so fun to like screw something up so epically. Like <laughs> I get to learn and clean that up now. Right. Right. Oh my gosh. It's, it is all so delicious. You know, I got to sit in traffic today because whatever, it it gave me time to listen to a podcast or music that I wouldn't have thought of. Or I looked over and I saw somebody else having their moment being human and, and it's all ridiculous and it's funny. So fun is funny. And you know, if we get the joke, right, right. right. I get to dance with being uncomfortable. Like look how uncomfortable and angry I am. Wow. Why did I get so angry? It's like guy, guy didn't use his turn signal. And I'm like, angry about okay. that. Okay. Right. How interesting. How interesting. How interesting. Right. Like, exactly. What does that, what does that say about, you know, what I've eaten today or whatever? Like, you know. right, 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 right. And so maybe we could, for this, <laughs> for this episode, we, I we will have to have you back for sure. But for this episode, I think that would the, be, that would be the delightful. bow, the bow on the, yeah, we get to play some more for sure. The sandbox is yeah, wide. It's so it. cool. It's so cool. So, but it gets into, again, perspective and reframing, you know, these are a couple of little tools for folks right now in this shaker pudding of what's happening uh, planetarily or Schumann resonance, whatever it is that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. To be able to know that this too shall pass, you know, guys, there are, there are avenues to be your whole self and you know, it, it's, we're here to enjoy it, but we basically yeah. are still here together. And if you need a help in hand, here's Morgan Rich. So here's, yeah, tell, to take us out with some, some other little nugget. And of course, tell us where to find you and we will put a dot, dot, dot to be continued for another playtime that we will have. Beautiful. Thank you. And just what, a, what, a, what an honor, Heather, to explore and to play and to, and to be together. Um, Thank you. Uh, just love, like love the back and forth, love your curiosity, your questions are just, um, 
you know, interesting, meaningful, and, and it's just fun. It's just, I, I really enjoy the exploration. Um, Thank you. And it's meaningful. Like I just, your devotion, your devotion to bringing heart centered care and love and meaningful lasting conversations to the world. It's, it's, this, this is the work like this, this is it. So thank you for your, for your devotion to that. And And thank you for that validation. Appreciate it. Yeah. 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 Um, I think the nugget that, that, that for me is, is, and, and there's been so many interesting things is, is, um, that what we want to do is move, goes towards, not away yep. from life's interesting moments. That, that it's that it's stepping into the discomfort. It's stepping into the curiosity. It's stepping towards the edge of the mystery. And then being willing to learn, how do I navigate my way in there? And we've shared some ideas about how, you know, like there's some skills that you need to learn going into the cave, being uncomfortable, staying calm, really using nourishing self-talk um, that are going to help with that stepping into not away from. Right. You know, and that feels really like the beautiful place. So, um, so I've got a fun, um, um, retreat coming up in October. Not sure when, when everything will get with air that's called find your next risk. And it's a, it's an intimate retreat for men. Um, there'll be 11 of us or there'll be 13 of us. Um, and we're leading with my dear friend, Rick. Um, and it's, and it's, it's an opportunity to do some of this work, to get towards that edge of the mystery, to really be in a place of, um, of, 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 um, what, what, what skills do we need and finding the next risk, finding the next place to step into. Um, and so, um, and the, you know, this coaching available, as I said, shared a little bit about it for women and for men to, to enter into these places, to really enter into these places. And I've been honing and, and getting into a place where it's just like, um, uh, just people are really thriving and, and so many of my clients are just like, they're, they're learning how to live bigger in their life and be in their lives in meaningful ways. And it's, and it's, it's just this idea of helping people see their biggest self and then standing on the side of the soul, like standing on the side of their soul of saying, you got this and just walking right with them into the beautiful places. And so, um, and so there's, there's that you can find me at, you know, you can email me at Morgan at morganrich.com. I'm on Instagram, Morgan rich underscore beyonder, um, uh, Facebook as well in that place. Um, I have a Substack, which is, uh, uh, morganrich.substack.com where a lot of my writing and videos and things like that from the, from the years have been, um, and just, I'm so interested in conversations and connections. Like I'm just open. I'm, I am open to the, to, to that. Um, I, that is really my devotion. And, uh, and the last thing that I would just like to leave the, the listeners with is, is our, our couple challenges. One is just to say, um, really taking a moment to think about like, what is it, you know, what is it to remember your heart? You know, what is it to really remember and know the, the human being that you are and want to be? Because you know it. You know, and just making that effort to just sit and be like, that's my calibration every day. Here I am. Here's the man I know myself to be. And so learning and practicing connecting to that. And then each day, taking a step. I was thinking about this for, for Josh's podcast, the back nine of in this back nine of our life, for those of us who are there is, is what are the actions, you know, so you connect to this place inside and then there's just some actions of what can I do today to take one step towards being the human being that I want to be towards treating the people in my life the way that I know, I know I want to treat that, that is, that is, beautiful and powerful and caring and loving and full of heart and treating myself in that same way. Right. So those to me are places like, let's, let's, let's all do that. And if we all do that, I think some really miraculous, beautiful, wild things are going to happen where we get to all stand together as fugitives in our sanctuary at the edge of the mystery. Yay. 
<laughs> cue lightning here. That just the thunder. We had a little clap of thunder. So we'll add the metaphysical little Thor or something. Oh, love it. Going, they feel yes. it. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Love it. Yes. Love it. Love it. Yeah. We, yeah. Those from all the cosmos, they have our back and they, I think they're cheering all of us really to, yeah. to, yes. And, and I actually and did, that you are yeah. a, a cheerleader and this is, that's just it too, is yeah. what's in our heart. Our heart is to help each other, to help ourselves in that nourishing way, but really to help each other and not tear each other down. So yeah. Morgan, thank you so much. And you were just about to say something else. I just remembered that I was going to an offer for the listeners, which is, which is if you go to morganrich.com slash Heather, um, for, uh, for, uh, uh, there's a, it's a donation page and the donation, what you'll get is a copy of my first book, launch your life. And, and, um, if you donate more than $25, I'll give you a, I'll send you a copy when the invitation beyond comes out of the, of the actual physical copy, physical copy of that. Um, if you want to just donate less than that, then you can get a, a, a launch your life physical copy and a PDF of the invitation beyond. And there's also an opportunity if you want to donate and support young people, um, the projects for young people to donate 250 or more, then I will donate books to young people and have a time to sit with them and, and, um, and do a little project with them. So if that, if that is of interest, you'll find that all at the, at the page and, um, um, yeah, just thank you, Heather, for the opportunity. Beautiful being with you. Thank you, Morgan. And and that might be our jumping point for another show is we're going to talk about the kiddos and we'll, we'll go, we'll go there because that's, Love it. that's the way. So yeah. Morgan Rich, thank you so much for being here sure. and being with all of us. Yeah. And thanks everybody for listening. This is Heather Lockett with Lasting Conversations. We get to the heart of everything. <laughs>